everyone knows that Darwin and everyone else during that time was influenced by the assumptions of c Victorian culture. And that's studied with a great deal of scholarly detail. We know in principle that the same thing must be true now, but it's very hard to study mm -hmm. in an ongoing <laughs> way. What there should be is a self-conscious field of science studies which takes place side by side and examines those cultural influences in a, in a constructive way with the actual scientific um, process. Okay, And that's something which hasn't taken place because science studies people are actually a little bit hostile towards science, it turns out. And so that kind of collaborative <laughs> enterprise has um, yet to take place. Now, it's not the case that science is a self-correcting process unless there's a diversity of views within science. Mm -hmm. If all the scientists in a culture have the same assumption, then there's nothing in science to be self-correcting. And as a candidate cultural influence for our time, I would like to nominate individualism, the widespread assumption that individuals are a privileged level of the, hi of the hierarchy, that everything can somehow be explained as a form of self-interest. I think that what we need are serious social historians to tell us why it is that individualism became so prominent, not just in evolution, but in everyday culture and the social sciences at roughly the same time in the middle of the 20th century, and how in many ways the formal scientific theory, such as the theory of individual selection in our field of evolutionary biology, is a tail being wagged by a larger cultural dog. And that this is something which is only now, because in part because we're suffering from the consequences of individualism in our everyday lives and societies, now we're really beginning to question, as we need to, you know, what is this axiomatic assumption of individual self-interest? What has it done and how true is it?